Timestamps are in the description below. If you decide to click on one, it will take you to the news article of your choice. Hello everyone. It's Stephen Clark and friends. Wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Hope you are all fit and well. Back again with a light-hearted look at the news from all over Thailand and Southeast Asia. So, let jump in and see what we have. First story, Ying Gluck Shinawatra, deposed Prime Minister of Thailand, assets have been seized. Story 2, Bangkok run against dictatorship. Story 3, 15 year old girl forced to sell drugs. Story 4, the real reason behind the Australian woman's horrifying Bali fall. Story 5, please come back to Thailand, we need you. Story 6, Irish tourist who claimed he was assaulted venue management alleges he refused to pay. Story 7, Thai Army takes delivery of Chinese battle tanks. But first up, Ying Gluck Shinawatra, deposed Prime Minister of Thailand, assets have been seized. Deposed Thailand Prime Minister Yin Lak Shinawat assets have been seized. Over 30 assets belonging to the former Prime Minister have been seized by legal executive department. To cover some of the losses, her administration's failed rice pledge scheme, while at least some will be auctioned to help cover her share of the damages, estimated at 35 billion baht. Assets include a house in northern Bangkok, where the fugitive ex-politician spent most of her time before she fled overseas to escape a two-year prison term handed down by the Supreme Court in her criminal negligence trial. Yinlock valued the house at 110 million baht in her declaration assets, putting it at the top of seized assets. Other assets include apartments, parcels of land, in and outside Bangkok, over 12 bank accounts. None of her assets have been put up for auction yet, despite the National Council for Peace and Order issuing an order to that effect. For those of you that don't know, the National Council for Peace and Order was the military jaunter that ruled Thailand between 2014 till 2019, but were re-elected during the last free election. Ying Lok's whereabouts over the last five months remain unknown, but photos surface Online recently suggests she is in London. Critics have slammed the regime for not making a concerted enough effort to track her down and extradite her back to the land of smiles, Thailand, with peace and order. Bangkok, Thailand, organizers of the upcoming sports event that has doubled as a rally against Prime Minister Prayat Chanachat said Monday they were forced by those in power to cancel another news conference. The event was formally to unveil plans of a run against dictatorship and was scheduled to take place at the Royal Watanaksen Hotel in Bangkok. But the venue withdrew, citing pressure from those in power above. It's the second time the group was forced to abandon its launch for the running event, scheduled to take place in January. They were to hold a press conference at the Foreign Correspondence Club, also in Bangkok, was foiled by the police, who allegedly threatened the club with possible closure if the event was allowed to go ahead. Run Against Dictatorship also gathered support from the Future Forward Party, which is in opposition to Prayat's government. During a rally on Saturday, they drew thousands of demonstrators. The Future Forward Party chairman urged the supporters to join in the run, or the Run Against Dictatorship. A 15-year-old girl called her father for help after she was forced by her boyfriend to deliver drugs. 
for his wannabe gang. Officials at the Nong Rong police station in Buri Rum were notified by the father on the 14th of December 2019 about a 15 year old girl. The father reported that his daughter was locked inside a room that was being rented at the time. She was forced to deliver drugs for the gang. If she didn't deliver the drugs or do as she was told, she was beaten. The 15 year old girl stated that she met Luis, the man involved, at a karaoke restaurant in Pakam district. Lewis invited her to stay with him and a few other friends. He then forced the girl Um to use drugs before forcing her to deliver drugs for him. Um didn't want to do this anymore and was in fear of being arrested by the police. Well, Lewis didn't like that idea and started threatening her with a gun. So she decided to call her father, who got the police involved and the police got her out of there. Indonesian police have accused an Australian woman of lying about the incident that happened in Kuda in Bali just recently. According to police, Emma Bell, 25, working as a hairdresser in Kuda Beach, Bali, was wearing no helmet when she fell off her motorbike and was dragged along for quite a while and found unconscious in the gutter. A story emerged how she had her bag snatched. During this incident, she fell flat on her face, which resulted in the injuries she suffered. Now the truth has come out that she fell off her motorbike and was not wearing a helmet. And this is how she sustained her injuries. Her crowdfunding page has confirmed that the bag snatching story was false. The bag snatching story gave Bali negative publicity and the Bali police have exposed it as an insurance scam. Thailand's Immigration Department has stated to its staff not to be too strict on tourists and scare them away from returning to Thailand. They've asked men and women to show some humanity and they explained that Thailand needs the tourist money. Lieutenant General Sompong, also known as Big Odd, was on a visit to his team in Mai Hong Son in northern Thailand. His words seem to be softening of the good guys in and bad guys out rhetoric, replacing with please come back to Thailand, we need you message. He also told his minions not to be overzealous. Follow the government's directive, but abide by the law and due process. But don't be too strict and scare away the tourists and other foreign visitors, he warned. He pointed out that immigration have a job to do as police, but immigration officers should not be a hindrance and should show professionalism with humanity and compassion. So it looks like you're going to get a kiss next time you go through immigration. An Irish tourist who just arrived in Padia has allegedly been attacked by bar security early in the morning after a dispute in one of the venues there. Pattaya City Police were notified of the incident at 3.30am at the beach road end of Soy 7. Police arrived at the scene and found the 46 year old Bart O'Greedy, Irish national, he was bleeding heavily from multiple wounds and had been knocked unconscious and left on the sidewalk nearby. He appeared to be heavily intoxicated or drunk if you like and confused. A good Samaritan had called the police and helped the tourist recover. He told police that he had a major problem inside the nearby go-go bar. After the issue, he was attacked by a group of men that he claimed were Thai security. He stated to the police that he attempted to film the dispute in the bar when the situation escalated. The bar in question was closed by the time police arrived. Later on that afternoon, the manager, 24-year-old Niramon Panidat, and her four staffers involved in the incident came to see the Padia City Police. Miss Niramon told police that the Irish man had a bill and refused to pay for it. He allegedly claimed he is the Irish Mafia and demanded why he had to pay. She told the Irishman he had to pay. On that, he turned around and slapped her in the face. At that point, she responded in defence. Staff joined in as the man was heavily intoxicated. More staff came to help her as he continued to attack the staff. They took him outside of the venue. She says she has CTC footage to prove her story 
and presented it as evidence to the police. The Irish man has not filled in an official report to police yet and refuses to comment on the evidence presented by the venue. However, police are continuing their investigation. Let's hope the Irishman doesn't continue his investigation of how much abuse Thai people will take in Thailand. Johnny Siam reporting, Bangkok, Thailand. The bar has gone olive green and Christmas presents galore as the Thai army takes delivery from the Chinese 10 battle tanks and 38 armoured personnel carriers. The new delivery was taken to Addison Cavalry Centre in Serabaya province for inspections. The delivery is a part of a 50 tank deal that was ordered in 2016 by the then military government. Although the government has not officially acknowledged its latest acquisitions and there has been some larger domestic criticism over it. A defence budget, Prime Minister Chanachat government allocated 233 billion baht for modernisation of its military. Now next week we'll have a bigger rundown on it and a few explanations so that should be a good story. Follow up for next week. Johnny out.